Hello everyone, welcome to a very special episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host, Sean McGahey, and this is a show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. You can listen to Day Spring Discussions on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic, and Patreon, and contact Day Spring Discussions on the Facebook group, Twitter account, and Day Spring Discussions at gmail.com. Hello everyone, it is a gorgeous Saturday morning here in Austin, Texas. Guys, hope you're out enjoying your weekend. If you're in town, hope you're avoiding the traffic for ACL. It's going to be crazy, so just take a minute, look at where it's all at, avoid it, or if you're going to the festival, have a good time, but be safe, guys. Also want to give a shout out to everyone out at New York Comic Con. A lot of good stuff going on out there. Of course, we got the Aquaman trailer that dropped yesterday, so probably the highlight. A lot of other good stuff that I'm going to cover in my next episode. But today, I had to do an emergency episode. That's right, emergency episode. I couldn't wait till Tuesday to talk about this. Why? Because, guys, I have to stop everyone I can from going to see Venom. I went and saw the new Tom Hardy film last night. Sony Pictures, based off the Marvel comic book character. And oh my god, guys, it was so bad. I mean, it's just like, you know, really bad. I I couldn't believe it. Honestly, if I wasn't waiting for the post credit scene to be curious what it was... I would have walked out probably about an hour into the film. It's just, I don't get it. I mean, I'm sitting there watching it and I'm trying to think in my mind, you know, how in the day of comic book films, when we get films such as Infinity War, Logan, Dark Knight, all these other great films that have come out, and then we get this. It's very reminiscent of like, 90s early 2000s superhero film before they realized that you could take the source material and treat it with respect and dignity none of which is what is going on in this film now of course whenever i do my reviews i always go spoiler so this is your warning and frankly just listen to what i have to say don't go see the film and you realize what you are not missing So let's go with probably my biggest gripe about the movie, the dialogue. I mean, the dialogue is just horrendous. You have Tom Hardy and Michelle Williams, who are the lead in this film, both of which have been nominated for multiple Oscar nominations. And the dialogue they get to say is just not good. (laughs) Not good at all. I mean, it's, it's so corny. You have the guys who wrote most recently um, the new Jumanji film, Welcome to the Jungle. That's probably their most recent thing. But they've done other stuff, um, Amazing Spider-Man 2, which I'm not going to say anything about that. And then other TV shows such as Fringe, Alias. And it was, it was, I can't even really say. I mean, it was just corny and bad, out of place, especially the way like Michelle Williams, like you could tell like she was trying to deliver it as best as she could but it was it was not good guys not good at all and the storyline of course is very simple Eddie Brock gets in trouble and basically his life is ruined by this interview that he has with this big titan of industry played by Riz Ahmed and so he then goes to try to expose him to get some of his dignity and maybe his job back comes in contact with the symbiote merges and becomes Venom. The way they did the symbiotes, inside like their head, I get it, but then there were those scenes where it would come out of them and have like an extra head like actually talking to the person or the host. And it felt like I was back watching Men in Black 2 with Johnny Knoxville talking to a smaller head of himself. It just seemed so corny. Now, Venom itself, when they finally showed, you know, full Venom, he was running around. He looked pretty cool. He didn't shoot webs, of course. No associations with Spider-Man in this film, which was a little bit distracting 
for me, but that's just me. I'm sure regular movie fans had no problem with it. Really what this film comes down to is as I was watching it, I felt like I was watching a different version of The Mask. You know, the Jim Carrey film from the 90s where you have this schmuck, you would call him, and he comes in contact with something that gives him superpowers and he uses that to like cause more trouble but really deal with like the people in his life. It was like a bad version of that because in that, at least Jim Carrey knew he was trying to be funny. In this one, Tom Hardy acts really bizarre and quirky where I'm not sure if you're supposed to think it's funny or odd. It, it was a very weird. It was the way he betrayed it or the way he was told to betray it. It just, it, it was appalling to watch. And it sucks because Tom Hardy... Very good actor. Very good actor. The way he did it, the way he was asked to do it, I think it came down, again, to the story and the script. It was just, you got to have that base there before you can build something good. And there was just not a strong enough base to really save this film. I don't know, editing-wise, if there was stuff taken out that could have saved it. But it was just very cheesy, corny, not even close to the quality of comic book films and what they are today and what we know it could be. Now I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and let's just go to the mid-credit and the post-credit scene. So there have been rumors for a while now that of course Woody Harrelson was going to be in the film and people thought he was going to play Cletus Cassidy, otherwise known as Carnage. In the comic books, when Eddie Brock is in prison, he shares a prison cell with Cletus Cassidy, and through the help of Venom, Brock escapes prison, leaving a piece of the symbiote behind, which Cassidy touches, bonds with, and becomes the villain known as Carnage. So we get to the mid-credit scene, and Eddie Brock, back on top as a reporter, is set to interview this murderer, Cletus Cassidy, and the whole time after being through the whole film i'm really hoping that the rumors are not true because woody harrelson fine actor great actor i enjoyed him in the recent solo film star wars story and i just was hoping he was not going to be associated with this film so i go and i'm almost covering my eyes at this point and I'm like, oh gosh, please tell me it's not him. Please tell me it's not him. And then they show him in a straitjacket. He turns his head. And in the comics, Cassidy has red hair. And it's Woody Harrelson with this like bright orange bozo type hair. And I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? It was just, oh. And of course he says the line, when I get out, there's going to be carnage. Oh God, what the hell? Who thinks this is acceptable dialogue now, okay? I mean, this is like Catwoman, Batman and Robin level bad. Ugh. Honestly, the best part of the film was the end credits scene, which wasn't even actually part of the film. You get this little bit of dialogue that says, meanwhile, in another universe, and it's a five-minute clip or so, of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the animated Spider-Man movie that's coming out in December. And that was fun. I actually enjoyed it. That was the best part of my whole viewing experience yesterday. I enjoyed that part. So if you're going to go watch Venom, stay till the end credits because the last five minutes of the movie is probably going to be the best part. I just, in a day where we have such great comic book films, I don't know what happened. Of course, Sony... They were holding out reviews on this one till the very last minute. Wouldn't let people see it early, and now we know why. It's not doing good on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know about box office. I think it might be okay this weekend to make a decent amount of money box office-wise. I don't see it going that far. The question is now, because of this, after we see what it does box office-wise, what does that mean for Spider-Man? Because I'm of the mindset, and I know several people that are, that... If Venom doesn't do well, Sony then believes that, hey, we tried it without Spider-Man, our Spider-Man-less verse 
didn't work. So we got to bring back Spider-Man. Let's take him out of the MCU because the contract with the MCU is up after the next Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Far From Home. They'll take him out, put him back, and try to do another cinematic universe with Spider-Man, thus taking him out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is not a good thing. I think, though, definitely after the reviews, they're halting Morbius, they're halting, you know, Black Cat film. Anything they had in mind is the pause button is already pressed at Sony. I came home and I realized I had to watch something Spider-Man that was good. People have been telling me to watch or play the Spider-Man game for the PS4, and I don't play video games. So when stuff like this comes out, I usually go on YouTube a couple weeks later and I'll watch the story mode, the cutscenes. I came home and watched some of it on YouTube for about 30 minutes or so, and it made me feel better. It made me scrub a little bit of what I saw of Venom out of my brain. Real little good feeling before I go to bed because this film oh god I just I, I, I can't believe that Sony allowed this to happen. I mean how do you release a film like this today? It's and again the previews you know you had Tom Hardy, you had Michelle Williams there was I think a third trailer or whatever I thought made it look pretty good. The other trailers were eh but the third trailer I thought looked good and this, no, 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 no. I'm really curious to see what Sony's gonna do after this. Again, success isn't measured just by critic ratings. It's gonna be due mainly to box office. I mean, Transformers films, those suck, but they make money, that's why they keep making them. We'll see what Sony does. I mean, Amazing Spider-Man 2, it made money. It didn't make as much money as it could have, or should have and the critic ratings were really bad on it so that's when you know they paused it regrouped let spider-man out to the marvel cinematic universe i don't know we'll see what happens guys but if you are planning to go see venom this weekend don't if you are in the theater and you are listening to this or you're on your way to the theater call me message me and be like hey i'm on my way to see venom and like an action movie i will get you on the phone and be like no get out now quick don't go i'll do whatever i have to to get stop you from seeing this film so do not go see venom please do not go see venom if it comes out of Redbox on video or whatever and you want to watch it one night just for fun just make sure you have a couple drinks beforehand and you might laugh your ass off there you have it guys i just wanted to do this really quickly to try to get my um words out and persuade you not to waste your money so it's a shame man like i said uh ruben flesher he done zombie land which i enjoy so i have a little bit of uh credit with the director tom hardy michelle william great actors even riz ahmed who plays the villain you know he's a good actor too but Nothing can save this film because of the script. The script and the dialogue, what they had to work with, it just killed it. Absolutely killed it. Go enjoy your weekend, guys. And by enjoying it, I mean don't go see Venom. If you did see Venom, fire back. Let me know what you think, of course. Hit me up on the Dayspring Discussions Gmail account, Facebook group, and Twitter. And that's it, guys. Until next time, may the Force be with us all. <laughs>